Let's talk about creating this layout. So what are we looking at here? On the right hand side, you'll see that there is a, a delineation of areas for content. And they have some filler text in there, some just random words to give you an idea of what could possibly go there. But this is the skeleton of the website that we were talking about. If you let's keep our eyes on the right for now, we see that in this area, we have a header. So that's where you would keep like your logo or the welcome drop down menu or something like that or the hamburger menu. Right underneath, uh, perhaps you could keep a horizontal line of navigation links like home, about, uh, contact us, things of that nature. Then we have two small boxes, which they're only that size because that's how much content there was in them. If there was more words in there, they would stretch out more, they would uh, extend down. And seemingly a box around it as well, holding those two, perhaps we could envision there being lots of little boxes in here or two larger ones, but not getting out of this area. There's hints of what we're gonna be talking about the rest of the class in this slide, but in this case, this over here to the left is the uh, content left section, so to speak. And there's a right, which is the aside where you think you'd see kind of a sidebar, another way to access the menu, maybe an about us blog, a uh, little, little snippet of text, or maybe a couple pictures, some testimonials, things like that. And at the bottom, uh, our footer. Uh, contact links again, maybe some accessibility information, things of that nature. We look over here on the right. Now we're creating this layout non-semantically, which is the standard, right? We're gonna talk about semantics, semantic HTML elements in the next lesson. But for now, this is how we're gonna do it. Now you haven't seen classes and IDs yet, but they're used heavily in this example. Just think about a way to, just think about it as a way to name your box. And we can see that these are all just different size and different color and ultimately different uses of boxes, but they're just boxes. So we have here something called a div, which we're gonna devote a whole slide to, but it is a box and inside of it goes this content, which is read up here. And it has an ID, a name of header. Right below, there's another one with an ID of nav with some text inside of that. And you can see that they're all divs, whatever a div is, but they have a name associated with their, uh, their logical purpose in the document. You see that this main content flex is holding not only the first part here, the second part as well, but also this aside. And the reason that these two are separated, these are actually three boxes in one. We got one, two, let's see, one, two, three children, two boxes, one, two, and then one, two, three children right here. But ultimately they've all been wrapped together for some reason. Again, this is all about, as you get used to it, just kind of calling the play before it happens. I knew when I was creating this that I would need this kind of structure so I could use something called Flexbox, which again, we'll get into. I'm sorry to be saying that so much. There is a lot to get into and there's still a lot, a lot left to go but we're starting to employ those a little bit in this preview section. We're gonna break it down as we usually do, slide by slide, but eventually you will feel comfortable with breaking things down into um, different hierarchies of boxes, giving them the correct name so that you can manipulate them, and anticipating uh, responsive issues and, and adjusting your structure from the outset with that in mind. But for now, just know that this whole area red is the content and it's broken up into one, two, three distinct sections they would be the main content section, the main content article, and the aside, all wrapped inside of the main content, which is this whole thing right here. And then finally the footer, just another div, which is a box with a name of footer and some footer information. When I say non-semantic, what I mean is that they're all divs and then their IDs are where it becomes different, right? We're saying that this div and this div are the same, except this one has an ID of footer, so it has this green border, which we determined in the CSS. And this one uh, has a red border. So the only thing that makes them different is the uh, ID. So semantic HTML is like, instead of calling this a div, we have a, a, a box, a HTML element called a side. And we have one called footer. And we could use those to be more specific with our boxes. It is a choice. There's a lot having to do with accessibility, which is very important in modern web development. But just so you know the difference, what we'd be using in this class is non-semantic tags but I will teach you and give you articles and links 
uh, to learn more about semantic HTML. And accessibility is definitely an important thing outside of the scope of this class, but definitely something to look into in the early days. So to wrap up, let's just take a look at the CSS. Pretty simple. Um, we're using the IDs, right? So that's why the hashtag is here. Oh, we have not talked about that yet. We'll be doing classes and IDs in this lesson later on, but pretty much this is the main content. That's why it's red. Let's see, main content flex. Don't worry about that one. Our side is red as well. Okay, let's just see what happens when we change this to black. Ah, so right, that's the aside over there. We have our header, right? Has a minimum height. That's why it's, that's why it's that tall, specifically that tall. And there's a min height of 50. The nav is just about half as tall. That tracks. And the footer is the same size as the header. So yeah, very simple CSS. This uh, this is more to focus on the HTML semantic versus semantic versus non-semantic. In the next one, we're going to talk about these tags in a smaller capacity, and I will see you then.